Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back. Season 2, A Light in the Darkness podcast. It's me, Ben. It's episode 2 today. Episode 2. We have uh, Ben Kachuk, our local youth member Yeah. of 20 years right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Too long. Too long. In case you didn't notice, uh, Ilya is not with us anymore, unfortunately. Uh, he got married. Um, he, have, he has chosen a path. Yeah. We marriage. had to let him go. Yes. Yeah. He has chosen a new ministry. Of running a family. Right. Uh, but he is replaced by Ben Variapa, but he can't make it today, which is why, unfortunately, we're with Ben. Pikachuk. Couldn't find anyone else. Um, Sorry, guys. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. We don't forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, Robert, you want to hit us off? Start us off with the uh, verse of the, the week? A verse of the week. Verse of the week is Hebrews twelve fourteen. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and jump to our guest and have him explain what he believes or what he understands from this verse. So Ben, would you like so to So yeah, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> well, um We've got too many Bens here. It's all good. We can get more. <laughs> but um so looking here. Yours, yours said follow, strive for peace with everyone. Um, we'll start off, what does that look to strive for peace with everyone? Um, and it's, I believe striving for peace with everyone isn't where you're just, you know, just bending over for everybody for everything. Is just searching ways to find common grounds where you need to. If you have, um, I guess, so if you're not seeing eye to eye with somebody, still being able to handle the situation in a peaceful way. But um, as a Christian should, as you know, you look at Apostle Paul, you know, he had a lot of contentions with people around him because of his faith, but he always did it in peace and just preached the gospel. So in the same way, you know, we are to continue living our life in that aspect, in, that, in, that, in the same way. And um, it says, and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Which I think that's a very good point we could begin from is what is holiness? Because without this holiness, we will not see the Lord. And, you know, that is our hope, you know, to see the Lord at the end. That is part of salvation, you know, that, you know, we're given. So, but without this holiness, we will not. So what do you guys think? What is holiness? First of all, what is holy? Yeah. Um, Well... I would say holiness is uh, righteousness, like perfectness, you know, like, you you know, how, I mean, how would you say it? Let's I say, think uh, it's being more godlike, his God-like, nature. Christ-like. Yeah, being as close as to his nature as possible. Yeah. That is, that is very true, because um, God is holy, the Bible talks about. What's also interesting is as we study the Bible, we see when it talks about holiness, and you see the, the way they define it is set apart for God. So we are set apart for God and, you know, for, to serve him, to glorify him, to worship him. Um, Raise his name above all others. Exactly. And that'd be a good question is how does that look in our daily life? Exactly. Uh, yeah. That in a holiness because, you know, you have sometimes people like somebody's you know, serving God um, and, you know, striving hard and some people like, oh, Svetosha, like saying it in a negative way, but that is what we're called to be holy. You know, uh, I believe the Bible says, it said, be holy because I am holy. Peter talks about, it was written in the Old Testament, Peter brings it up, like, be holy, God said, because I am holy. Mm-hmm. So if we are to be holy in our life, set apart, how does that look in our life is the first question. What do we see co- uh, often right now that um, kind of, you know, messes that all up? Because I believe right now we have issues where the world very easily enters the church. Yeah. Where we accept it, we become kind of used to what we see around us and let it become natural and we start accepting it. So um, I'll ask you guys, what do you guys believe holiness looks like in our life daily daily life well i mean your ordinary church girl would say uh reading the bible and praying every morning and every day Mm -hmm. um which you can do that as all you want but 
and I don't think that will be what will show your holiness if you don't truly do it from your heart. So I would say, well, starting off with, um, <coughs> you find find holiness you'd find through um, what's his name, doing uh, serving the Lord, do, doing everything you do in life, uh, to serve God and put Him f uh, first through everything, uh, and given, like. For example, like, you might buy yourself a house or something, you know. A lot of people would say, like, oh, I want that house for myself, you know, to show how good, like, how much money I have or whatever, you know. But what you could use that house for is to start your family. You know, you can uh, supply a shelter for your family, and through that family you can uh, build, um, uh, you can raise kids that will uh, serve the Lord with you, you know, and, do everything for uh, for God and for His glory, you know. Same thing goes with, like, um, any ministry you do in your uh, life. Is Many people can do a ministry for so long, and it'll get to the point where they're doing it repetitively, and what's keeping them up on their feet is just, um, like, how do you say it? What's keeping up on their feet is people supporting them, and then they're getting the support, and people are looking at them to saying, like, oh, wow, you, you did this, you, you're so good, you know, like, uh, God bless you, you know, you're doing, you're, that you're doing this, you, 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 and they, uh, that's to the point where they themselves get brainwashed, and they forget what they're doing it for, so I'd say, like, holiness is doing, doing everything for the Lord, truly, from the bottom of your heart, and bringing him above, putting him first above everything else. Yeah, I, re I really think that you, you got that really accurate. Now, the other thought is, then what issues do we have in our daily life that we face that pull us from that? What, what messes with us? Because we see, like, often um, we see people uh, falling short. All the, we fall short all the time. Yeah. Like, so look at each one of our lives. We fall short. We're not perfect. What are the common issues that we see that pull us down? Or um, what are the battles we daily see? Um, I think it's just the flesh, the... The temptation, the, in, the, the inner you yeah. that always tries to come out in that battle. Because Christianity is, that's essentially what it is after you're saved. You know, being saved is easy, being being a Christian isn't. Yeah. Following it's, Christ isn't, isn't easy because you always fight yourself, your inner you that tries to come out. And I think holiness is being Christ-like, trying to be like him, his nature, taking on his nature, not yours. You have to reject yourself. There's nothing good in you by nature. Yeah. Everything good in you is him. So what gets in the way of you being him is yourself, which is kind of ironic, you know. Mm -hmm. so it kind of gets in the way. So every day you wake up, sometimes your first instinct is get on your phone. That's yourself. That's your inner you coming out, you know. Why not find the time to talk to Jesus, build that connection with him or something. Just praise him that you got that first breath in the morning. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Spend time with him. Yeah, I catch myself doing that a lot. You know, you wake up first thing you do is reach for the phone. Exactly. Uh, when the first thing you could have done is just got on your knees and pray. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least come to him in the form you are. You know, mm -hmm. you don't even ha theoretically. Yeah, you don't even have to get up. You know, but obviously, it would be best to. It's a really interesting. Um, it's like salvation. You can't earn salvation. Because Christ paid for it all, it's given to you. But what's interesting, even though salvation is given to you, you say it's free because you can't earn it, but the co for just to be a disciple of Christ, it costs you everything. Exactly. Yeah. It costs you everything, all your desires, your wants, your lusts. You're giving that all up to follow Christ, to be Christ's disciples. So which is, a, you know, a lot of people miss that point. You know, you'll have... A lot of evangelists, just come to Jesus. He died for you. You guys, you know, just come and you're set. And it's like, just pray the sinner's prayer. You won't have to worry about it and, and then live your life. But what, what about afterwards? What is it going to cost you to be a Christian, to be a disciple of Christ? Everything. Everything. Yeah. And um, I, I think so often the shortfalls we have as Christians in being holy in our life or being able to, you know, being that light that we are called to is that um, often, like, often we fall short on grasping to God. Like, we get too carried away with our things. And it's, uh, 
interesting, you know, Jacob in the Bible, um, we know when he wrestled with God, you mm -hmm. know, when, and it's like, what's interesting, it's, uh, so he wrestled, and w and it said, originally talks wrestled with the man, and when the man saw that, um, actually, let's just, uh, I'll actually read it kind of quickly, so I don't butcher it up, but he said, um, when, and when man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint. As he wrestled with him, then he said, Let me go, for the day has broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, Your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel. For uh, Israel, for you have striven, in some translations say, wrestled with God and with man, and have prevailed. So what's very interesting is, here, what God calls Jacob, you know, changes Jacob's name. He says, you have wrestled with God, and you have won. But we're like, no, but Jacob lost. Like, he was out, wrestled, he has, his hip was dislocated. Like, he, he, he lost, technically. Yeah. But why did God say he won, he prevailed? Because what is interesting is, even though he was fully at his lowest point, he, he believes his brother was after him. He, this is, he just took his wife and kids across the river to separate, to kind of protect him from his brother. So he was at his lowest points, just stressing out, and he wrestles with God. But one thing he wouldn't do, he would not let go. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. was at his lowest point in the biggest struggle, but he would not let go of God. Yeah, it kind of comes uh, when the, I forgot the name of the woman, but she touched uh, Jesus' uh, robe, and she was healed. And why was she healed? Because she believed and she had faith, you know, at the end of the day, it's like the amount of faith you have and the, the amount you're going, willing to go through to uh, get to the end, you know, it's like as Jacob fought and didn't, um, you know. Wouldn't let go. Wouldn't let go. Same with her. Like, you can look at it, what I'm trying to say is like, you can look, uh, put the same lesson into faith, you know, put, uh, push, like go all the way and push your full force uh, through faith. And yeah, and that's what our, I think the, often the reason we fall short in holiness is do we battle this hard to stay close to Christ, yeah. to show Him in our life, you know, and when we're at our lowest point, do we hold on and call out to Christ? And he, like, you look at Apostle uh, Paul, and like, I love reading about Apostle Paul and what he writes, because like, he'll point out, he, he was like, um, he would say, where I'm weak, he is made strong. Yeah. He'd be pointing out like that it's not in those strengths parts and strengths that he was uh, proud of. It's like we have this issue where like we try to go, we're like we need to serve where our strengths are and everything. But it's interesting with with Paul, he didn't really care much about the strengths because he was so focused, so dedicated to live this holy life that showed God that he was proud of the moments when he was weak, where God had to uh, uh, step in and act on his behalf because God was more seen. And he mm -hmm. was so proud of those moments. And it's like the total opposite of our, like, of our nature right now, the way we look at ourselves and like, you know, about you know, our best, being able to show our best. But I think that shows the lack of, you know, the lack of faith and the lack of, um, you know, even that holiness being set apart the lack of it in our life. You know, how truly are we set apart? Because we tie ourselves to this world where we live off our strengths and everything. But in ministry, if, if God's with you, you know, if God works in your life, if Christ is in you, how can a God that created the heavens and earth, you know, everything around, like you look at um, the, what's that, Webb web Telescope? Uh, James Webb. Yeah, James Webb <clears throat> Telescope. You look at the images coming in, and they're just mind blowing of the galaxies mm -hmm. out there. That's the new. That's the new Hubble, right? It's yeah, it's like the Hubble on steroids. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just amazing. And then, like, you'll see some images comparing to the size of the Earth compared to everything else around us. Yeah. We are nothing, you know. We are nothing, you know. But then this God that can create all of this, you know, He comes into our life. You know, and He works in us, and like we still get selfish and try to go do our own things. We, you know. It really shows how little we know of God. Yeah, yeah. to add on to that, like, to put into perspective, 
like you're talking about James Webb and the images coming in and just how tiny we are. And to think that a God that created all of that, the whole universe, came down to this earth and then he died for you. And he didn't just die in a simple death, you know. He was tortured, brutalized, died in agony. And that's just the physical side. And then took up on himself all of God's wrath. Not just a little bit, but all of the wrath. And then that should have been you. Yeah, and then it's like, it makes you think like, who, why? who do you think you are? When you Not even that. Then the question is like, why? Why do you do that? Well, yeah, no. And then the, the, mean, the answer is so simple, yet it's so complicated because the answer yeah. is because he loved. Yeah. You know, it seems simple, but then it's so complicated because we'll never fully understand that love. How much do you have to love us, mm-hmm. you know, to get just specks of dust yeah. to, to go through all of that to save us? Yeah. But then it's, it's amazing because uh, it, it sets a path for us, you know. You look at what he did. And then he, uh, it was stated to be Christ-like, to be righteous. So uh, he did everything, so we have an example to go off of, you know. Um, I feel like back when they had to sacrifice the lambs, um, you know, like you, it was, they just, they went off by the laws of Moses or the laws of, uh, well, like all the laws that they had at that time. That's what they had to live off of. But for us, it's as simple as be Christ-like because of what he did. And how he lived, we c- it's uh, easier for us to look at. I mean, yeah, we still have the Ten Commandments to go by, but uh, being Christ-like falls under those as well, you know. So that's <clears throat> one thing is, like, God's plan is so amazing, and it's it blazes the way. Uh, as as long, All we have to do is have faith and um, have true faith and uh, s- stay on that path. And we will... <clears throat> going back to what we were talking about, we will go through trials. And without trials, if you're not going through trials, then you're doing something wrong. You know? Or if you've never been through trials, then I you you'd be doing something wrong, you know. Um but yeah. Ben, you brought up a, a real good point that the reason we struggle is because we don't fully understand the sacrifice that mm-hmm. Christ did for us. Exactly. Now, if we understand it better, we love Christ more because we understand it better. The question is, how do we understand it better? How do we value it? What is the process in our life, the, this process of sanctification, where we're able to grow um, and be able to grow in this understanding Christ's sacrifice for us? To, to me, every time I catch myself slipping or just falling or whatever it is, I always, I, I always go back to the cross. I just, mm-hmm. this is what I picture, just me personally. Every time I, you know, I'm going through trials or whatever, I'm, I'm just standing there at the cross, looking up at Jesus. He's hanging there, covered in blood, like completely. He's torn apart, but he's looking dead at me. And he said, or he says to me, I'm hanging here not because you deserve it, not because you did anything, not because you can do anything, but because I love you so much that I want to gift you this salvation. And so every time I look up and I'm like, you yeah, thank you. I don't deserve it. I accept your salvation. And then to me, it's just like, I need to get together. Because of that, I, I need to build that connection with him, that bond, build that relationship. Yeah. That's a very, very solid point, being able to check and you know be able to look up at the cross and actually trying to envision and understand it. I, um, I, I like... Um, Carl Jung, a Swiss psychiatrist, probably considered one of the best psychiatrists, he said, the modern man doesn't see God because he doesn't look low enough. And natural, naturally, we're like, well, what do you mean? When you look up at God, you look up at God. What do you mean he, he, you know, if he doesn't look low enough? But it was interesting, the idea is that the man, we as humans think so high of ourselves we never truly look down to see who we are. Yep. Yeah. If we truly look down all the way to the ground, down to ground level, we're a shadow. We're just black, we're nothingness. Mm-hmm. And we saw how corrupt we are at core, you know, and that you know, without Christ, we are nothing. It becomes so much easier to value Christ's sacrifice. 
because we have this tendency, like we're talking about Paul, how Paul was so focused about his weaknesses in that where he was proud, most proud of, is because he saw himself as nothing, and then everything else. He, and then at that point, God was everything. Yeah, all him, not you. Yeah, there's, there's nothing in you. And yeah, good point. Like when, when you crumble and crush yourself to that point where you look and you see that there's no good in you. Zero. Zero percent good. And the only thing good in you is him. Exactly. Amen. That's when you start to value his salvation, value his grace, his love. You cherish it so much that when you are slipping, you feel bad. You're hurt because you're like, I'm going back to those old ways. Yeah. Yeah. And then you look at the cross and you're like, Jesus loves me just the way I am. And he died for me the way I am. Yeah, he accepts all that come to him, and um, I think so. That's how we grow, you know, truly live a life that is holy is being able to truly start evaluating ourselves for who we are. Yes, to humans have this n- tendency where we're just um, we're so we're so fast on lying to ourselves about all that because we just desire to be, um, you know, we desire to look better. We want to look better for everybody yeah. else, and it's just like this. This whole, like, we see in modern society, this whole postmodernistic idea where it's like, you know, objective truth. It's like what you feel is true, which is, it's not, you know, the Bible says, the truth shall set you free. And when you said the truth, it's not a truth or the truth, the truth. There's only one truth, and it's Christ. Yeah. And He holds it. And that's the truth that will set you free. And like, we, uh, even as Christians, struggle often as we're afraid to truly look at what the truth is. Because mm-hmm. we know how it will condemn us, like and show us, just show us for who we are. We're just afraid to look at it, and we will lie to ourselves. We'll hide it. We'll postpone it. Oh, later, something like that. I'm too busy right now. We'll find every excuse not to face ourselves for who we are, and um, and that is the reason why I think so modern Christianity is so fast, uh, like uh, like so f- fast and declining on this holiness part. To where the world can't see it. There was a modern preacher that um, I don't know actually how recent he was, but he said uh, he said modern Christianity has grown so weak that if it was a poison, it wouldn't kill anybody. Yeah. And so like at that point, and that's so true because you look, you meet Christians out in public, and you can't tell a difference anymore mm-hmm. in character and dress, everything. They just look like everybody else. Yeah. Um, that kind of goes back to what we uh, read for the verse of the day, you know, like working, uh, I'll just remind us, uh, working at, the, uh, at living in peace with everyone and work at living a holy life for those who are not holy will not see the Lord. Um, you know, like if we're going out into this world and we're, for example, like we can, uh, we'll talk like how we talk to people, you know, like throw slander and throw bad words and like, uh, it, and we're Christian, we say we're a Christian, uh, how holy does that make us look, you know? And a non-holy person is going to look at us and uh, be like, oh, is that that's how Christians are? Uh, well, uh, then I'm a Christian too. Or they'll be like, oh, well, I don't want to be a Christian because they don't seem much different than I am, you know? And it's kind of like, definitely goes back to what we read at the beginning, like, got it. I think that kind of summarizes up. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, um, to the whole like, the whole summary for that is, truly seeing yourself for who you are um, so you could value the blood of Christ better yeah. and at that point you could live a more holy life because it says those not holy will not see God and I think so that's where it started I think that's a lesson for you know for myself for all of us and all the viewers is start being honest with yourself and your shortcomings mm-hmm. stop trying to hide because you're afraid that other people can kind of judge find close people around you to be able to talk to you know the bible says is spirit you know there's a reason why it says it about opening up before one another because yeah. trying to battle sin in your life by yourself you're not going to get anywhere and um you know we're, you know talking to other people in the youth you just hear stories and i'm just battling and battling i'm just gonna try harder i'm just gonna try harder throw this game plan together and just keep falling to the same sin yeah, you're not gonna be able to do it by yourself you're not because you're again you're just relying on your own strength it's like the opposite of what paul was talking you're, you're just putting faith in yourself to try to overcome it because you see god doesn't like it so you're coming from the right 
you come in with the right heart that you don't want to disappoint God. Yeah. So you, you like I can't blame anybody that's fighting it in that way in the aspect that they don't want to disappoint God, but they're missing the point where um, they they're so focused on trying to do it with their own strength. But if they truly try to get to know Christ better, spend all you know, see themselves for who they are, and just grow closer closer to Christ. Because the closer you grow to Christ, the more you see yourself for who you are, and the nastier you. All the stuff becomes. Yeah. That's 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 exactly my story. The sins that I've struggled and kept falling over and over again, and I kept fighting, trying to find ways, putting in plans. The the wins only started coming when I started getting to know Christ better. Mm. When I got to know Christ better and started seeing that is what is sacrifice, and like we said, that we are nothing without Christ. We 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 deserve death and destructions. Like the song of Amazing Grace says, "We're wretches." That's all. That's what we are. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's all Christ. And at that point, when you see that and you, you, you know, you, you fall in love with Christ and then the sins become nasty. That's true. Like, yeah. That's what I was actually just about to say to add on to that. When you see yourself for who you actually are, you start, start to love Jesus so much more. And when you grow in that love with him, you look back at your old ways, your old sins. And because you love Jesus so much, those sins disgust you because, you know, if you fall back into that state again, you know that you're hurting him. And since you love him and you cherish him that much, you're afraid. You're yeah. afraid to sin. You're afraid to go back to those ways. Yeah. So which is why you're not going to go purposely out there in the world and sin. Of course we sin. We're going to yeah. sin every day. I can't even count how many times I've sinned today. Mm-hmm. But I know God or Jesus forgave. He died for all my sins, past, present, future. And with that being said, you know, you, you, I still love him, and he still loves me, just the way I am. But yeah, good point. Very good point. Yeah. I feel like it goes back to, like, what you were you saying earlier, like, you're standing there looking at the cross at Jesus, you know. And like I was saying, um, just there, you trying to battle your own sins, or you thinking you can do it yourself— is disrespectful uh, like that's how i would see it because like who do you think you are with the power that uh, like what power do you think you have that you can beat this uh thing by yourself this sin by yourself you know that you should you should be trusting christ in it you know uh after especially after what he did um so like it's definitely a big thing that <laughs> that i would, I would uh, touch on personally but, I mean, well, I, I think they'll so. summarize it. We kind of summarize mm-hmm. it up. Just yeah. see yourself for Second you episode. Yeah, I'd say that's a good second episode. Very good summary. Yeah. And from there. Uh, oh, yeah, don't forget Congress. Congress, yes. yes. Congress is coming up. Uh, for our local. up. Yeah. Everyone sign up. Our local youth, um, youth across America. Uh, this We're having a Congress March 9th in Tyler, Texas. Um you can visit their page. I mean, I forgot their page. Well, I guess you can post it in the. Uh, yeah, it'll all it'll all be in the uh, description below and everything. So if you guys are interested in going to a congress, uh, it happens one every four uh, once every four years. So uh, definitely make sure you sign up and uh, you get your tickets now. Um, here in about two weeks, uh, prices will rise. So go ahead and jump on those tickets while you can. Uh, while they're still as low as they are. And um, yeah, I want to thank you guys all for tuning in and listening to our podcast. And we will see you guys next week or in two weeks. (laughs) Have a blessed day.